So, I will discuss with you oxygen therapy delivering devices. What is oxygen therapy delivering devices? These are those devices which we use to deliver oxygen to the patient. Now, in this chapter, I will not go into physiology of oxygen therapy or anything of that sort. I will only stick on the de uh, discussion of devices, right? In what condition, what device we choose and what are the different FiO2 which would be delivered by that device, etc, etc. So, let us discuss oxygen therapy delivery devices. Now, what is oxygen therapy? In a very simple way, the definition written on the screen, to give oxygen above room air concentration is called oxygen therapy. Room air oxygen concentration is 21 percent. So, when I give it above this, we call it oxygen therapy. And why do I need to give it? There are few indication of oxygen therapy. So, what are the indications? Indications of oxygen therapy. Number one, patient in acute hypoxemia, acute hypoxemia that is PO2 less than 60, SAO2 less than 90 percent, okay. Patient in acute hypoxemia due to any reason. Hypotension, in hypotension perfusion is less. So, what we do? We attach oxygen to optimize more, uh, so that the blood has more oxygen content, so that tissue hypoxia is to some extent prevented. So, when cardiac output reduces or hypotension is there, we always attach oxygen to the patient. So, hypotension, it, here it is not being attached for the ventilation, re ventilatory reason, it is more because to, op to hyper oxygenate the blood of the patient, okay. Then patient in respiratory distress. Then for those patients who require more than normal oxygen concentration, so patient's condition requiring higher oxygen concentration, like stroke, you know normally in a patient in hypoxemia, our target is to keep the saturation 90 percent, but in stroke patient the target is to keep the saturation 90, 93, 94 percent higher. So, stroke the target is 93 to 94 percent, okay. So, these are the basic, basic requirement for uh, basic indications for oxygen therapy. Now, let us discuss that how do we choose a device and what is the definition of oxygen delivering device. Simple, oxygen delivery device administer regulate and supplement oxygen to the patient it would administer it would regulate and it would supplement the oxygen to the patient now how do i choose the device in which patient what device we have to attach. So, choice of the device would be, it would depend upon degree of hypoxemia. How much patient is in mild or moderate or severe hypoxemia and how much FiO2 the device can deliver. So, degree of hypoxemia, degree of hypoxemia. Then the second thing, ventilatory pattern of the patient whether patient is able to maintain his inspiratory flow rate or not, right? Whether the device required to supplement in the flow rate also or not. So, depending upon the ventilatory pattern of the patient. So, ventilatory pattern and third on patient's comfort, patient's comfort, okay? So, these are the things which may make us choose the device 
that which device we have to attach in which patient okay so now let us discuss the devices in two division so let us discuss the oxygen uh, therapy delivering devices they are divided into two division so devices are divided in two groups number 1 low flow oxygen delivery device this low flow oxygen delivery device so what is this low flow oxygen delivery device low flow oxygen delivery device provides a variable fio2 to the patient depending upon the respiratory pattern or ventilatory pattern of the patient so when i attach these devices it depends upon the ventilatory pattern of the patient that how much fio2 will be delivered through that device okay so fio2 cannot be prefixed right it cannot be prefixed so let us see low flow oxygen delivery device provides a variable fio2 a variable fio2 depending on patient's inspiratory flow depends depending upon patient's inspiratory demands inspiratory demands more the patient's inspiratory demand more room air entrainment will happen with these devices and more the fio2 would reduce i'll by a simple mathematics also i will try to show you so more the inspiratory demand more the inspiratory demand more air is entrained more air is entrained and fio2 is diluted so more and more fio2 would be would be diluted so patient with a high inspiratory demand this would not be a very preferred device because it will more and more dilute the fio2 okay so what are the devices which comes under it which we will discuss so what are the examples of low flow oxygen delivering device first the most popular and the most commonly used nasal cannula or nasal prongs or nasal small nasal masks are also nowadays used all same okay second simple face mask also called hudson marks mask hudson mask third face mask with a reservoir bag which is of two type face mask with reservoir bag which is of two type number 1 the reservoir bag is a rebreathing reservoir bag or a non rebreathing reservoir bag so reservoir bag which is either rebreathing or non rebreathing depending upon the valve attached to it one way valve attached to it which allows rebreathing or doesn't allow no rebreathing so we'll talk about them so these devices i will discuss in low flow a uh, low flow oxygen delivering device so i wrote a thing in it that it provides variable fio2 depending upon patient's inspiratory demand so how do i prove it how do i prove it so let us talk about any uh, low flow oxygen delivering device and let us talk about two patients patient a and patient b with different ventilatory demand 
okay so for low flow device i'm just trying to tell you low flow device FiO2 vary according to patient. Now, let us say we have two patient with a minute ventilation, different minute ventilation. So, this column I am writing minute ventilation and I have patient A and I have patient B. A and B. Okay. Okay. Patient A has a minute ventilation 30 liters per minute. Okay. And patient B has a good stable ventilation 5 liter per minute. Okay. Patient A is breathing 750 ml of tidal volume at a rate of 40 breath per minute. At a rate of 40 breath per minute. So, that is why we are getting a 30 liter per minute of tidal volume and patient B is breathing 10 breath of 500 ml tidal volume. So, I am getting 5 liter per minute. So, these are two patients. Okay. Now, let us say in both I have attached a, a, a low flow oxygen delivering device and the flow of oxygen which I am giving is 2 liters per minute. So, oxygen flow rate in both patient I am giving 2 liters per minute, 2 liters per minute. Okay. So, what is the calculated FiO2? How I will calculate FiO2? Calculated inspiratory oxygen concentration of the patient, what final air which patient is breathing, how much oxygen is present in it. So, how do I calculate? So, let us say patient A has is taking total 30 liter per minute, inspiratory flow is 30 liter per minute of which only 2 liter per minute is 100 percent oxygen, 28 liter per minute of the 28 liter air patient is in training from the atmosphere which is the room air. So, if I calculate 12, 2 into 1 that is 2 liter of FiO2 1 which I am giving plus 28 liter the remaining 28 liter of, from, of 30 liter is 0 0.21 that is the room air divided by total volume of inspiratory flow 30 liter. This will come 0 0.26 percent, this will come 0 0.26 percent. Patient B 2 liter of FiO2 1 plus 3 liter of room air entrained, 5 liter. This comes out to be, sorry, I will not write percentage, I am writing FiO2. 26.26 or 26 percent, like this I have to write. In the second patient whom I was calculating, 2 into 1 plus 3 into 0 0.21 by 5. This comes out to be 0.53 FiO2 or 53 percent oxygen. So, the patient with different ventilatory pattern, a different FiO2 is generated by the same device at a same flow rate. So, here I cannot control FiO2. It is patient's ventilation pattern of the ventilation would which, which would control the FiO2. Got my point? This is the problem of low flow oxygen delivering devices. In patient with a stable breathing pattern, these are beautiful devices. They are the devices which can even give a very high FiO2 to the, to the patient, right? But patient's ventilation should be more controlled for attaching low flow oxygen delivering device. Now, let us come on high flow oxygen delivering device. High flow oxygen delivering device. Now, guys, th these devices gives fixed FiO2 irrespective of patient's inspiratory flow, irrespective of 
patient's inspiratory demand. So, they give fixed FiO2 irrespective of patient's inspiratory demand. Got my point? Okay. What are the devices which comes in it? Venturi mask, very popular. We will discuss about it. Air entrainment nebulizers, high flow nasal oxygen delivery, high flow nasal cannula which is very popular in the COVID-19 era, high flow nasal cannula. Guys, apart from this, the things which I will not discuss here, the invasive ventilation, the mechanical ventilation, the mechanical ventilation, they all will deliver a fixed FiO2. Your anesthesia bag and mask ventilation, your AMBU resuscitation bag, they all will deliver fixed FiO2. Anesthesia bag and mask ventilation they all will deliver fixed FiO2. AMBU resuscitation bag, resuscitation bag, they all will deliver fixed FiO2. Got my point? Right? In this, I will only discuss with you Venturi mask. Few lines I will tell you about air entrainment nebulizers. I mean, nothing great. And little bit I will tell you about high flow nasal cannula. So, high flow nasal cannula, which I will discuss about. Right? So, let us talk about, let us talk about, let us start our discussion with low flow oxygen delivering device starting with nasal cannula. So, low flow oxygen delivery device, nasal cannula, nasal cannula. Okay. See this. Simple nasal cannula has been attached, right? There is an oxygen source, tubings. There are two small nasal cannulas which goes in both the nostrils, right? Two small cannula going in both nostrils, attached to a very small reservoir and tubings which will bring the oxygen and a source of oxygen will be attached to it, this tubing. Patient is smiling, patient mouth is free. So, when patient is, has been attached with nasal cannula, patient can talk, patient can smile, patient can eat. So, does it, it give a picture that it is a very comfortable device? Yes, nasal cannula is one of the most commonest used oxygen delivering device and it is very comfortable in circumst certain circumstances. So, let us say it is very common, one of the most common device and useful and mild hypoxemia it will not give us a very high FiO2. So, useful in mild hypoxemia. It delivers oxygen in nasopharyngeal space. Okay. How much flow we have to keep in nasal cannula? Flow of oxygen. You know, very uh, number of times I have seen people that if patient saturation is reducing, they go on increasing the oxygen flow as if increasing the flow of oxygen will improve the oxygen, uh, the uh, FiO2 delivery in that patient and will improve the oxygenation. It is not so. Every device has its own limitation and every device has to be used in their limitations. If you will give a very high flow through nasal cannula, more than 6 liters per minute, it will cause a lot of nasal crusting and discomfort in the patient and patient breathing pattern will change. So, patient will not be ready to accept it. So, what is the flow rate which we need to keep? 1 to 6 liters per minute. Okay. And what is the FiO2? It delivers. 0 0.24 to 0 0.45. It delivers FiO2 between 0 0.24 to 0 0.45. 
for every liter oxygen concentration increases by 4% for every 1 liter per minute right till the flow of 6 liter per minute beyond that you will not increase the flow so guys how do i calculate in it let's say patient is on room air the oxygen concentration is 21% and let's say i am giving 1 liter per minute so 4% oxygen concentration will increase so it will become 25% that is 0.25 FiO2 21% oxygen room air and I am giving my patient 2 liter so 4% again will increase oxygen concentration so 21% plus so it becomes 29% that is 0.29 FiO2 so maximum 21% plus 6 into 4 4 percent will increase so 21 percent plus 24 so this comes to be 45 percent so 0 0.45 so we have written that FiO2 delivered by it should be between 0 0.24 to 0 0.45 so for every 1 liter approximately approximately not very rigidly 4 percent oxygen concentration is increasing okay so what are the advantage very convenient you can see the remember our smiling patient very convenient okay very convenient patient can talk eat while receiving oxygen okay disadvantage nasal crusting nasal crusting right nasal crusting can happen and important just a small chart for FiO2 FiO2 percent and flow per minute so 24 to 28 percent oxygen will be delivered at 1 to 2 liter of flow 30 to 35 you can simply calculate I am just giving it like this 3 to 4 liter of flow and 38 to 44 at 5 to 6 liter of flow approximately so this is the maximum a nasal cannula can deliver just see this diagram so in low this is a just a diagram for showing how the FiO2 gradually with device to device is increasing so for nasal cannula up to 6 liter 40 45 percent of oxygen will be delivered okay so patient needs more than this mild hypoxemic patient has become moderate hypoxemic and I need a more high FiO2 to be delivered. So now I will I will switch to simple face mask. So after nasal cannula, the next device is our simple face mask. Okay. So next device which I will discuss with you is simple face mask. Okay, guys, a simple face mask is a mask which is made up of plastic with expiratory port and it is used to deliver oxygen to the patient it has a it has a reservoir capacity of 150 to 200 ml right so let us write few and it is uh, its first point it is called hudson mask hudson mask it delivers it is set to deliver flow of oxygen between 6 to 10 liter per minute 1 to 6 liter flow required I use nasal cannula till 0.45 percent now simple face mask 6 to 10 liter and it will deliver FiO2 of 0.35 to 0.6 okay it is useful in moderate hypoxemia useful in moderate hypoxemia now what is this face mask guys just see this this is a simple face mask you can see this 
it fits over the nose and the face of the patient tightly it fits right over nose nasal cavity and oral cavity the mouth is not free so definitely patient cannot talk eat and be comfortable like nasal cannula right and patient sometimes feels very claustrophobic in this face mask if you see the capacity of that uh mask is 150 to 200 ml and expiration is happening in that mask it is provided with expiratory expiratory ports which will remove the expiratory gases from the face mask actually if you will keep the flow rate very less in this face mask then expired gases would can be cannot be cannot go out of the face mask and may remain there and patient may rebreathe carbon dioxide so a minimum a mandatory flow rate is must in face mask so it, a 6 liter of flow rate needs to stop rebreathing through face mask got my point so let us write it fits over the patient's nose and mouth and has side exhalation ports through which patient exhales carbon dioxide right there are side ports through which patient exhales carbon dioxide requires a minimum flow of 6 liter per minute of oxygen to prevent rebreathing to prevent rebreathing so to prevent rebreathing we are have to give 6 liter per minute the mask reservoir capacity of the mask is 150 to 200 ml so reservoir capacity of mask is 150 to 200 ml so this is our face mask so it is used for moderate hypoxemia it will give fio2 0.6 that is it can give only 60% of oxygen now my patient needs more oxygen more higher concentration of oxygen let's say severe hypoxemia but the breathing pattern of the patient is stable patient has a stable breathing pattern but needs a higher fio2 guys the beautiful device which we have for this is face mask with rebreathing bag i told you in the beginning of low flow device if the patient's ventilatory pattern is stable low flow oxygen devices can deliver a high, uh, can deliver a very high fio2 also it is not that only high flow devices can deliver high fio2 even low flow device can deliver it depends upon the patient's ventilatory pattern so if patient has a stable vent ventilatory pattern but he is in hypoxemia then he needs a face mask with rebreathing or uh, with a reservoir bag which are of two types so let us talk about face mask with reservoir bag face mask with reservoir bag it's of two type simple i'll show you the pic first this is a face mask with reservoir bag this is a bag this is a bag with a capacity of nearly 1 liter and uh, both the type with a non rebreathing bag or rebreathing bag looks same it only depends upon the valve present between the bag and the mask if the valve is a one way valve which allows the the 100% oxygen to enter the bag and does not allow the expiratory gases from mask to enter the bag only the gas from bag that is 100% oxygen from bag will go to the mask then it becomes non rebreathing bag because patient is not rebreathing his uh, his expired gas 
and if this one there is no one way valve then in the back both expiratory gas patient's expiratory gas and 100% oxygen both is being collected then it is the face mask with a rebreathing bag there is expiratory gas of the patient is being collected okay so let us talk about the face mask with reservoir bag it uses a reservoir bag reservoir bag of capacity 1000 ml 1 liter to deliver high concentration of oxygen high concentration of oxygen mind you guys it can deliver high of io2 it's of two type number 1 face mask with non rebreathing bag non rebreathing bag reservoir bag and second face mask with rebreathing bag rebreathing bag Let us talk about the first one. In this, a one-way valve, a one-way valve between mask and reservoir bag. Is there which prevents? patients expiratory gas to enter it to enter the bag so guys you need to keep a high flow in this and bag should be inflated so the flow should be 10 to 15 liter per minute it can deliver fio2 of 0.8 2.95 can you believe 100% if i go to like practically it can deliver that is it can deliver 80% to 95% and it is very useful it is very useful in patients who are severely hypoxemic so patient who are severely hypoxemic with a normal ventilation ventilatory pattern this is a beautiful air device so so even in your covid 19 patient it can it who are hypoxemic but their ventilatory pattern is stable this is a beautiful device right so useful in severe hypoxemia severe hypoxemia okay now with rebreathing bag the second one in this there is no one way valve no one way valve and both inspiratory and expiratory oxygen is collected in the bag okay just the difference only okay guys again the same thing i want to show this is low flow oxygen delivering devices and you can see gradually how they are increasing their fio2 so in nasal cannula we have to keep the flow up to 6 liters and maximum fio2 0.4 Five that is forty to forty-five percent. Simple face mask, six to ten liters, and it can deliver, let's say, maximum fifty to sixty percent of oxygen. Then partial rebreathing ma uh, mask, it can deliver ma maximum up to your seventy percent of oxygen. Okay, and non-rebreathing, it can go further, eighty ninety percent of oxygen it can deliver. So gradually they are increasing the, in the delivery of FiO two. Gradually they are increasing in the delivery of FiO2 that is shown there is uh, let's say approximately approximately got my point so that's an approx everything depends in low flow device on patient's ventilatory demands okay so this is all about our low flow oxygen delivering devices now let us discuss high flow oxygen delivery system. in which the first device which i will discuss is venturi mask venturi mask okay guys see this venturi mask 
this is a venturi mask this is not a face mask you can see this is face mask that constricted po portion of the mask where the oxygen is apply is attached is not in this face mask it is not in this face mask okay but how is venturi mask different the venturi mask has this constricted tube attached to it right okay so let us talk about venturi mask definitely venturi mask is high flow oxygen delivering device so it will deliver fixed fio2 fixed fio2 and it can deliver a very high flow right high flow but one thing i want to tell you that it will not it the final fio2 it cannot deliver a very high fio2 i mean maximum 0.6 that is 60% oxygen it can deliver but it will deliver fixed fio2 whatever you want to deliver so in the patients whom you don't want to give a very high fio2 very high oxygen right uh, like an asthmatic patient right you don't want to give a very high fio2 in these patients this is a beautiful mask it will contribute to the flow will make the breathing comfortable and give a fixed fio2 okay so what is this venturi mask it works on a bernoulli bernoulli principle so it works on bernoulli principle to entrain to entrain room air when 100% oxygen is delivered when the flow oxygen is delivered through a small diameter pipe with constrictions on its side a low pressure is created and air from the atmosphere is entrained so 100% oxygen delivered through small orifice what happens that oxygen is being delivered right at a flow through a small orifice so what and there are constrictions there are constrictions on the side so because of this flow what happens a negative pressure is is generated and air from atmosphere is entrained and total flow becomes high so i am giving from here 100% oxygen and from here room air is entrained room air entrained depending upon this side constriction how much constriction that much room air will be entrained and that much dilution of the fio2 will happen fio2 will decrease so based on this different orifice venturi mask was developed on which to give a particular fio2 uh, to give a particular fio2 a fixed flow rate was was calculated that for this much fio2 uh, to attain this much fio2 this should be the oxygen flow rate then only this much air will be entrained and then the final mixture will have this much fio2 and this much flow total flow so everything was calculated in venturi mask let's say right and color coding and with color coding different venturi mask was made i will show you that picture as well now let me say let me just uh, show you how to calculate the ratio of oxygen and air at different fio2 let's say i had to keep my patients fio2 i wanted to keep 0.6 i wanted to give 60% oxygen to the patient okay so what happens how do we calculate air oxygen ratio so 1 minus 0.6 that is the 100% oxygen minus the fio2 we the oxygen concentration we desire 1 minus 0.6 by 0.6 minus the room 0.2 okay so this comes to be 0.4 is to 0.4 1 is to 1 so to deliver fio2 0.6 for every 1 liter of oxygen 1 liter of the room air would be entrained well let's say if i have to achieve a fio2 of 0.4 air oxygen ratio 1 minus 0.4 0.4 minus 0.2 
this comes out to be 0 0.6 by 0 0.2 that is 3 is to 1. So, for every 1 liter of oxygen 3 liter of gases will be entrained you are getting my point. So, more gas is being entrained more room air is getting entrained FiO2 is more and more diluting less room air is being entrained FiO2 is less and less diluting. So, let us say if I give my patient the second one 10 liter of oxygen then 30 liter of room air will be entrained 1 is to 3 and total flow of the patient will become 40 liter and FiO2 delivered would be 0 0.4 you are getting my point. So, I know for sure that what is the inspiratory flow rate in this patient and how much FiO2 is being delivered to the patient. So, everything I know in this device this is our venturi mask. If you see the pic this is venturi mask this is venturi mask this is the venturi barrel and this is the holes for entrainment of room air you can see it is marked room air entrainment holes and there are opening for exhaled air as well with a one way flap valve attached to it. There is a color coding for the venturi valve there are different color coded available also blue color code will deliver 24 percent oxygen at 2 liter per minute of the flow green one 60 percent oxygen at 15 liter per minute of the flow. So, flow and FiO2 we will know how much total inspiratory flow is uh, uh, will happen in the patient right final inspiratory flow will go to the patient. So, and how much final FiO2 patient will receive we will know in venturi mask for sure this is just a, a coding system for the venturi valve you need not remember I am just telling you just giving you an idea when you see different different venturi masks you do not need to get confused ok. So, this is our venturi mask very useful what is the indication use when inappropriate high FiO2 needs to be avoided needs to be avoided and there is risk of CO2 retention because there is low inspiratory flow. So, here we can increase the flow rate also. So, it is very useful in asthmatic patient bronchial asthma asthmatic patient to give oxygen to asthmatic patient it is very useful ok ok. Now, again what I told you the proximal end of the mask end of mask what I showed you consists of a device with recommended flow rate to provide desired FiO2 ok. So, it will be there on the device. So, according to that we have to set it ok. So, this is about our venturi this is all about our venturi mask which works on Bernoulli's principle. Now, let us talk about blending system oxygen next one is oxygen air blending system. Now, this blending system works for many things it works on nebulizers also there are blended nebulizers nothing great we have to know about it. We fix the FiO2 and oxygen and air is blended by the blending system and the desired FiO2 is delivered to the patient. So, a precise control of FiO2 can be done air and oxygen is blended for precise FiO2 and flow ok this is the blending system. The next device which I want to discuss again very important device from exam point of view high flow nasal cannula. We talked about simple nasal cannula which is a low flow low flow oxygen delivering device. This is high flow nasal cannula which is a high flow oxygen delivering device. What does it constitutes of you can see this what does it consists of it has a nasal interface which we attach 
this will have a gas source that is the source from which oxygen will come a humidifier which will humidify that oxygen and a high pressure tubing which will bring that oxygen at a high flow and a nasal interface okay so there is a source of gas a blending system depending upon your fio2 you want to give you fix it in that flow is kept more than 60 liters per minute this gas at such a high flow is humidified to make it comfortable for the patient heated and humidified because a humidifier is attached and then through the tubing high pressure tubing it reaches a nasal interface got my point okay see on the screen what benefits does it give this continuous high flow of oxygen washes the upper air of the co2 etc so it decreases the dead space the washes out the upper airways this act as a reservoir for oxygen in the upper airway for the exchange of gases continuous flow so because of that continuous flow the dead space of the upper airway is decreased it avoids the rebreathing so what is happening through the nasal cannula there is a flushing of the dead space right flushing and dead space reduces and because of this high flow a pressure is created in the airway and a minimal peep of 3 to 5 mm uh, is uh, is uh, generated so it also offers peep peep of 3 to 5 mm and this high flow nasal cannula has shown to substantially decrease the requirement of intuba intubation in many hypoxemic patients with respiratory failure so it has lot of benefit a uh, oxygen source is required for it a humidifier a high pressure tubing and nasal interface okay so always humidified oxygen is given to the patient the benefits flow which we keep is more than 60 liters per minute right what is the benefit advantage fixed fio2 it will deliver fixed fio2 the second advantage decrease dead space nasopharyngeal dead space by continuous washing of carbon dioxide third third generates peep generates peep of 3 to 5 cm of water and prevents or reduces the requirement of intubation prevents and reduces the requirement of intubation okay so this is our high flow nasal cannula the th the next the high flow device which i wanted to discuss this is very important and this device is very commonly being used in covid-19 patients they have hypoxemia there is and they need when they need a high fio2 this device is this device has been very helpful in increasing the oxygenation in these patients and decreasing the requirement of intubation in these patients okay so this is all about oxygen delivering devices which i wanted to discuss questions are being asked i just want to show you few pics right and then we'll end this chapter guys you see this what is this this is you must have seen this in operating room uh, anesthesia face mask anesthesia circuit and i am giving patient by creating a cne seal by my thumb and finger i have c putting it on the mask nose of the mask and by in a c form and three fingers in a e form and i am lifting the jaw and creating a seal of face with the mask so this uh, bag and mask ventilation will always provide a 100% oxygen it is creating a seal and i am giving a 100% oxygen so this will always give my patient the fixed fio to 100% oxygen 
if i use this an anesthesia face mask through a ambu bag to give oxygen to the patient then also it will give a 100% ox 100% uh, fio2 100% oxygen so remember this anesthesia face mask always gives a fixed fio2 whatever we want to give to our patient so it also comes under high flow oxygen delivering device so this one last line anesthesia face mask comes under high flow oxygen delivering device always gives fixed fio2 whatever you want to give fixed fio2 you want to give 100% you can give 100% want to give less you can give less okay so this is all about our oxygen delivery devices thank you guys